Yeah. Hello, world. Okay, we're starting just a minute early just to make sure that our um, our viewers can tune in to our Facebook Live. So um, we'll just talk about things like the weather. Great. Yeah. It's a <laughs> usual morning up here at Lyon. Some We've rain, some not rain. a little bit of every kind of weather so far. Right. But very pleasant. Mm -hmm. So if you do happen, we might end. We are in the greenhouse. So we might hear some rain at some point if, if it comes back. There is a dark cloud right above we'll us, too. See. We'll see. We'll see. How are you feeling today? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Getting all the work done you need to? I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's on the docket for today? For um, today is mostly wrapping, wrapping different things up mm -hmm. around, around the greenhouse. Um, we have a new intern. Yay! Mm -hmm. Saxony. Her name's Saxony. She's wonderful. She's, she was an intern with Grounds last year, right? She was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's good to hear. But it seems like she likes the greenhouses better. I don't imagine why. But. Oh, I don't have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any personal preferences, of course. <laughs> of course not. It no, is 10 o'clock. We're going to go ahead and get started. So again, aloha. Welcome to Lion Arboretum and our Facebook Live. My name is Hadley Anderson. I am the Education spe Specialist. And with me today is David Shepard. He's our Horticultural Assistant. And we are talking plants. And of course, you've been with the Arboretum for about two years now. Yes. And this is your last day. It is, sadly. So we were talking about some of the things that you're wrapping up. So what are some, let's talk about some of the projects you're wrapping up in our greenhouse. Yeah, sure. Um, mostly we've been working on catching up on the, the COVID kind of backup of plants that needed to be repotted and um, some of the propagation work and things like that. Now that we have interns in and we've got volunteers back, we're so excited to pick up where we left off and mm -hmm. catch up on things that we weren't able to get to. Yeah, because I can imagine well, without volunteers and our interns, we'd have like uh, quite a reduced workforce. We to just would. The two, it would right? be a lot sadder. Yeah. yeah. We really missed out on having more people in here. And mm -hmm. of course, our volunteers that we love so much. So, yeah, we have a lot of very dedicated volunteers. And as we were just mentioning, our intern, Saxony, previously worked with Ground. She's back again this year and she's working with horticulture. So she's working in the greenhouse instead. Yeah, we're excited um, to have her. Yeah. So, David, tell me a little bit more about your background, too, and what got mm -hmm. you here to Lion Arboretum. Sure. Well, I've been into um, tropical plants since a pretty young age. Uh, when I was growing up, I grew up in southwest Florida, and the climate is pretty subtropical, tropical. So I, I was able to grow a lot of the same ornamentals that you would find at Lion. But, of course, Lion and Hawaii in general can grow so much more than I ever could. So that's partly what brought me out here. Um, I did my undergrad in Florida at Florida Gulf Coast University, mm -hmm. and then I came out here for a master's in tropical plants and soil sciences at UH. And I loved it, obviously, because yeah. I haven't left ever since. Oh, no, man, that's awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, since then, I've done more work with uh, native plant conservation on Molokai and on Kauai. Mm -hmm. I worked with the National Park Service doing restoration work on Molokai. And at the National Parks, I mean, at the um, National Tropical Botanical Garden, I was at Limahuli Garden on Kauai. And that's just a beautiful garden, too. Um, it's it nestled in the north shore of Kauai, if you've ever been there. And then from there, I came here. Um, I always wanted to come back to Oahu after the Outer Islands, so mm -hmm. I love it here. Yeah, oh, I, definitely every island has its own personality, too. But mm -hmm. I've been to Kauai. I haven't been to the National Botanic Tropical Beach. National Tropical Botanical it's Garden. A mouthful. Wow, <laughs> it's a lot of coals. Um, National Tropical Botanical Garden um, up on sure. that side, but um, so uh, what else can we talk about? Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's a beautiful spot mm -hmm. and um, similar in terms of the wetness of line. But I think what we have different is that we just have such an, a collection of tropical plants from around the world. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more research that we also plug into this place just because we have the advantage of having the university right next door. So we get yeah. a lot more grad students and things like that that will pop in here for projects. And mm -hmm. it's just exciting to have that whole community of Manoa mm -hmm. right next door. Yeah, absolutely. We're definitely working with a lot of different um, researchers and scientists. We had, of course, talked with Miriam last week. And so not only are we very locally focused, but we're also internationally focused with the tropical um, tropical studies that are going on, yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, okay, so you've worked here for the past two years. What have been some of the favorite things you've been able to work on? Mm. I think just um, when I first came here, I didn't... 
there were a lot of plants at Lion that were completely new to me because our collection is so much broader than what I had worked with. Mm -hmm. My background was mostly in native plants and with your more common ornamentals that you'll see in the landscape. But here, of course, we have things that are found nowhere else. Mm -hmm. And so the really exciting thing for me was to learn more about um, different Calathea varieties, uh, Heliconia varieties, mm -hmm. um, Begonias, and, and other plants that I hadn't worked as closely with. And then on top of that, the propagation of those plants that I, I hadn't focused on. So again, my propagation work was mo more with natives. Mm -hmm. And it was exciting to see just uh, what a collection that we have here. I think one of the most interesting things that we have been working on in the last year is there's a lot of plants in our collection that were collected back in the 70s and that are now no longer found in other pl parts of the world. Oh, wow. And with the plant trade being what it is, plants come and go mm -hmm. in their, um, it's almost like fads, it's like fashion. Right, like right? What's, what's a popular what's ornamental? What's popular right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the things that have suddenly become really popular are things like carnivorous plants, philodendrons, mm -hmm. and um, a, 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 a kind of array of plants that we have in our grounds, but aren't commonly found in your common garden shops. Mm -hmm. So we've been working on trying to expand that collection and then make it available to the public. Yes, okay, because we usually have two plant cells a year. Of course, we had planned on canceling our spring plant cell anyway, mm -hmm. but COVID came along anyway. And so yeah. it, even if we had attempted, we wouldn't have had a plant cell then, but we have a plant cell coming up in November. And so uh, we're propagating a lot of different things for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, We are, yeah. Cool. So be, because we didn't have that plant, so we've, we have a lot more stock. And that'll be exciting when we finally get to unveil that to the public. Yeah, we depending on what how everything shakes out in this in this climate right now, uh, we'll see how that plant sale might change a little bit uh, mm -hmm. from our previous formats. But we'll yeah. see how that works out. Um, uh, trying to think of some other things. Um, so, what's behind us? <laughs> ah, <laughs> this morning, I'm okay. obviously very eloquent. This morning, so we found something this morning that's kind of special. It is. Um, this is an amorphophallus, <gasps> and it's a very miniature version of what you might see in like the newspapers and things like that. So um, like the amorphophallus that I am familiar with is of course the corpse flower which is has one of the largest inflorescence in the world. Right, right. right. So this and is this is the same genus. Mm -hmm. So amorphophallus includes amorphophallus gigantis which is the corpse flower. This one is a much smaller um, species but obviously it has the same characteristics. It's very... It kind of looks like purplish on the inside with rotted meat. We have a question yeah. from Jenna, well, mm -hmm. from the audience. Yeah. Do you have a coastal dune plants and seeds collection? Coastal so. plants and dune seeds collection. Am I hearing that right? Mm -hmm. Coastal dune plants and seeds. And seeds. It's we, in our collection. Not inside of our greenhouses. Um, the uh, coastal plants don't do as well in the really rainforesty environment that we have here. Um, there's other places that have much better uh, climates for that kind of collecting. But do you think that they, are they over in the seed lab too? We do, yeah. yeah. In the seed lab we have everything. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But what we can actually grow on our grounds is limited by the climate, of right, course. Exactly. Very, very wet area, so this the, they probably wouldn't do very well. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Fair. Excellent. So that's our that's our smaller corpse flower plant mm -hmm. um, and it is purple on the inside and kind of spotted, almost looks like rotted meat and yesterday you guys said like there was a smell. Yes, it smelled like a dead rat in here. <laughs> <laughs> actually, a couple of our interns were like, what is going on over here? <laughs> but it's actually that flower, mm -hmm. and that's the trade-off to it. That is how it attracts pollinators. Its pollinators are flies, right? Its and pollinators are flies, and flies are attracted to... Smelly meat. Smelly things. Yeah. We actually uh, were just on the grounds a few minutes ago and over by um, our Great Lawn area that we actually found some that are actually on our grounds right now. So if you didn't know, we are open to the public mm -hmm. of, through reservation. So please visit our website and you can get the form for the reservations. And we have two time slots where people can visit. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also wanted to talk about, D David, since it's your last day, mm -hmm. yeah. um, can you, do you have any favorite memories of working here at Lion for the past two years or anything like that? Yeah, it's actually, I think my favorite times have always been the plant sales. Mm -hmm. It's hectic, a lot is going on, but it's when we do the most interacting with the public and you get to see the people that 
are just so excited about this place mm -hmm. all at once. Plant people are some of my favorite people, of course, because we all love plants here. Right. <laughs> and they're just great people. Mm -hmm. So getting to see them every year at the plant sales and then the energy of that, it's very festive. It's very um, exciting. We usually have activities going on. Yeah, everybody has n new plants that they're getting. Mm -hmm. And of course, everybody's taking care of their babies, and taking yeah. them home and excited. Yeah, and I always get good plant questions. Yeah. Well, speaking of plant questions, if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to chime in. Um, I'm sure David would do his best to answer that. Sometimes they're a little specific and maybe it's a little outside of our expertise, but we'll do our best. Um, uh, and we still have a few minutes to do that, so please chime in with your questions. But David, you're moving on, and this is because of a very, very wonderful reason. Yes. Um, you are also an artist. Mm -hmm. So you also did your undergrad in art as well. I did. So can you tell us about what, what are your next steps and where are you heading off to next? Yes. So I've been um, doing plant illustration for the last couple of years, mostly focusing on native Hawaiian plants. And out of that project, I learned how to sew, how to do um, designs for, for fabrics, for fashion. Mm -hmm. And I have an Aloha shirt collection that I started up. And what actually, I've been working on this for a while, but what actually uh, blew it up, if you will, is surprisingly COVID. <laughs> I, I know, it's something good that came out of it, I guess. I guess. But I got into mask making. So I've been making these beautiful masks with native Hawaiian prints. And they got featured in the New York Times mm -hmm. in an article by uh, Guy Trebay, who's a fashion writer for the New York Times. And because of that, it kind of put me on the radar. And you can see here some of the, yeah. some of the designs. What is this plant that you have featured in this design? So this is Puakala. It's a native Hawaiian poppy on a background of uh, bluish lava rock. And the plant itself is already kind of bluish silvery, but this design highlights that even more. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a bunch of other plants within the design, but depending on the cut of the fabric for the mask, that's what you end up with. So what happened was um, I had shirts of these same kind of patterns. And when COVID hit, all of a sudden I had all this fabric and seamstresses were looking to make masks. So I ended up doing masks that actually match the fabric, which people thought was really interesting and unusual. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it was just very intuitive. It was right. like, well, we have this fabric. We have the fabric, so might as well do might as well address do. a need in the community. Exactly. And they're beautiful. Yeah. I mean, and then, you know, and they all feature different plants like Paula mm -hmm. which native is, fern. right, which are plants that are used in laymaking or, you know, Ilima flower and Haupu'u fern. Oh, nice. So they, um, they all tell stories about plants. And so the mission really hasn't changed. I've gone into this more fashion-y type of thing, but... Um, You're still telling beautiful stories about yeah, plants. Yeah, through a different medium about plants. Yeah, we have a question. Mm -hmm. Have you designed anything that features plants at Lion? <gasps> I have, yes. So this print, um, and I have this in several different colors, but this print is Hapu'u fern and Ilima flower, and these plants are plants from, that I drew from Lion Arboretum. Um, they are not are in our native garden, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that print is meant to embody Manoa Valley in general, which we're a part of. Hey, it sounds so lovely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and beautiful designs, too. So. Thank you. Awesome. Well, is there anything you'd like to add on your last day? Sure. Yeah, well, I mean, of course, there's a whole community of volunteers that I won't get to say goodbye to today. But I hope that I'm going to, I plan to continue to come up and volunteer every so often. I hope to run into people and get to say goodbye then. But it's not really goodbye because I'm not leaving no. this area. I'll still be right around the corner. And my mission hasn't changed. So I'll still be working with plants and I'll come here to take pictures of plants and things like that to inspire the designs. But you I'll think you'll do an Omorpho Phallus design? Uh, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're focusing on natives right now, which yeah. natives need need their time to shine as well. So mm -hmm. that's that's really important. Well, David, thank you so much for all of the work you've done here at Lion Arboretum and, of course, bringing native plants to fashion, which is rad. Um, so I want to thank all of you guys for joining us today, and we'll see you next week. Um, next week, we'll actually have Tim on board. So uh, get your plant questions ready for that. Um, we'll be doing a greenhouse tour. And don't forget to send pictures. The best way for, to help us identify a plant, if you're looking to identify a plant, is to take a picture of the flower and the leaf so we know what we're looking at. So tune in next week. Thank you, David. Thank you. And aloha. Aloha.